Today, I will be presenting a brief overview of porcine epidemic diarrhea virus in North America and also the experience of the Iowa State University Veterinary Diagnostic Lab had during the time that this virus emerged in the U.S. Porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, or PED, is a member of the family Coronaviridae. It is an RNA virus and also a member of the genus Alpha Coronavirus shared by two additional swine uh, enteric viruses known as transmissible gastroenteritis virus as well as porcine respiratory coronavirus. In addition to the genus Alpha Coronavirus, we have the genus Delta Coronavirus, which contains one a virus of interest to the uh, porcine industry, and that would be the porcine Delta Coronavirus, which of course has been of interest as of late as well, and this one being known by the acronyms of PDCOV or PDCV. We do have diagnostic tests available to detect all of the known porcine coronaviruses that infect swine. Multiple sample types can be uh, used for this particular detection pertaining to the particular virus of interest. Before we go further, and although not the main focus of our topic today, I'd like to establish a difference between PED and the porcine delta coronavirus due to some potential confusion that maybe exists out in the industry regarding the difference between the two. Uh, porcine delta coronavirus is not a variant or form of PED, nor of the TGE virus, which has been in the U.S. for uh, considerable years. They do belong to the same family, but different genus. So they are different viruses, and the PDCOV or the delta coronavirus is not the variant PDV that's been reported recently as well. Although they share similar clinical signs when they infect swine, there still needs to be considerable research done to understand the pathogenesis of the delta coronavirus similar to some uh, understanding that's needed for our PED virus as well. Retrospective testing at the ISU VDL on retained fecal samples has detected, as far as our earliest known date of detection, the Delta coronavirus on August 21, and that was in a farm in Minnesota that submitted the sample at that time. However, additional testing is in progress. At the time of the emergence of PED virus, it was considered a transboundary introduction, and that was not a not, it was a non-programmed disease, as well as at that time a non-reportable disease. It's not a zoonotic pathogen, and there's no known human food safety risk. And when it emerged, it looked clinically similar to the TGE virus that has been in swine for a number of years, regarding the clinical signs and syndrome that it will induce. At the ISU VDL over the past year, we've done considerable diagnostic testing with PCR tests alone being over 57,700 tests, primarily being conducted through the winter months, starting uh, within the month of October as noticed here and extending through here in the early part of the spring of 2014. This doesn't represent the number of positive accessions, but the number of total tests and corresponds to about 7,000 to 8,000 samples per month. However, additional testing is available for diagnostic cases beyond the PCR test alone. Regarding the emergence of PED in the U.S. and the Iowa State Diagnostic Lab experience, it happened fairly rapidly, but for the four days between April 28th, or for the days between April 28th and May 4th, we had four separate ISU VDL submissions that ironically occurred about at the same time. These all reported similar clinical disease that involved um, enteric clinical signs. Diarrhea and vomiting being uh, the, the primary, si primary sign or clinical sign in adult and neonatal swine with uh, greater than 90% neonatal piglet mortality. And again, clinically looking similar to TGE virus, that's where most of the testing was focused. These were Midwest swine farms, three in Iowa and one in southern Indiana. However, no relationship was established between the farms. Routine diagnostic testing that became rather exhaustive for the suspected enteric pathogens were negative, prompting further investigation. Additional collaborative efforts between the ISU VDL and the National Veterinary Services Laboratory between May 6th and May 16th involved a number of different virus detection assays that fortunately we have available for these types of investigation, ranging from electron microscopy, pan coronavirus or pan family type of PCR testing, genetic sequencing analysis, and then comparison to other genetic uh, sequences that are within a public database known as GenBank. Through those efforts and multiple tests that were conducted, we were able to confirm that the virus was PED, thus prompting NVSL to announce on May 17th of 2013 that PED was in the U.S. Regarding the current status of PED, through what is being reported from the USDA National Animal Health Laboratory Network, 
which does a great job supplying the uh, web, some web-based information regarding uh, PED virus and its uh, infection within U.S. swine and elsewhere. As of May 15th of this year, the data being current through that time, there are at least 13 labs voluntarily reporting their data when it's made available through the testing that's conducted at the time. Up through May 15th of this year, the number of PED positive accessions have been over 6,600, either on an individual animal or herd basis, and that number um, has increased since that time uh, at least slightly. And the number of PED positive states that have had at least one positive accession at that time was also at 29, or representing around 6,600 swine farms. Current reports of U.S. pork production losses are around 7 million pigs since May of last year, which is approximately 10% of the U.S. pig population. And in January 2014 alone, it's estimated 1.3 million pigs were lost. PED has also been detected in multiple provinces of Canada and as well as in Mexico. This figure here showing the United States is from the NALN report. And this I uh, took from the American Association of Swine Veterinarians webpage which they have a link to this, uh, all these particular reports. Here you can see a representation of the different states that do have at least one positive accession. As of May 15th, it was 29. It's now up to 30, with the addition of Virginia with one positive accession. The, num the top five states with the overall highest number of positive accessions would include in order Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, North Carolina, and Oklahoma. A little bit on the clinical disease that we're all familiar with. Again, the profuse watery diarrhea being consistent feature as well as various levels of anorexia, lethargy, and vomiting. All ages are affected. The neonates most severely affected with at times up to 100% mortality, but variable morbidity in our grower finisher, nursery and adult swine. Neonatal piglets are most severely affected because of their elongated villi for absorbing colostrum at birth. With mature enterocytes covering those villi, it supports viral infection and replication thus leading to destruction of that particular structure of the intestine and a malabsorptive diarrhea, and then subsequent dehydration and death. Transmission is fecal-oral with viral shedding based on experimental infections being at least 24 days post-infection in field cases that might vary much longer based on the amount, and quantity, or the amount and timing of infection. Incubation typically is 12 to 18 hours post-exposure, and clinical signs being observed 24 to 72 hours post-infection. This can be dependent and vary on the age of the animal. <clears throat> it is most variable in older swine and may be uh, affected by pre-existing immunity as well. Gross lesions would include very thin-walled intestines due to the destruction of the villi or the mucosa of the intestine that was described earlier, also containing the watery intestinal contents that goes with the diarrhea. Just a quick schematic or pictures microscopically of what I've described as far as the difference between what would be considered a normal villus length in a neonatal piglet versus post-infection, what happens to that mucosa or those villi once the virus infects and destroys that tissue, the inability to recover quickly, and then the subsequent mortality that can occur within that population of pig. We do fortunately have multiple diagnostic tests available for detecting the virus in uh, multiple different sample types, and the sample types have become quite varied because of PED virus much more so than other viruses that we test for. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is the most common test used to detect PED genetic material in sample types that it primarily include feces and fecal swabs. However, oral fluids have been used as a surveillance tool within a population to detect this virus. Multiple different environmental samples to track or detect environmental contamination. And of course, our feed samples as well. Other uh, diagnostic tests to touch on brief, pre, uh, briefly would include immunohistochemistry. Uh, the advantage of this particular test is we can take fixed tissue and recognize a lesion that could correlate with a particular infection, and through a chemical reaction, we can identify the agent within that lesion itself. Genetic sequencing of these viruses continues to increase, looking at the particular nucleotides that make up a particular gene or perhaps the whole genome, if that's of interest. Veterinarians are requesting genetic sequencing so they can compare viruses to see if there are any genetic differences or the potential emergence of different strains of PED that may or may not occur. However, virus isolation or trying to isolate PED in cell culture 
has proved to be quite difficult, and the success is variable. Unfortunately, we don't have a benchtop assay for uh, isolating PED that's very easy or user-friendly, and thus uh, bioassays are used as an alternative in swine in order to be able to detect whether infectious virus exists in a sample or not. Antibody detection assays or serological tests that are available started with the indirect fluorescent antibody assay, detecting antibody against a whole virus antigen. These tests are fairly quickly or easily put, uh, put into place and validated is the reason it was used initially. For serum samples and other sample types under investigation, we also have ELISA antibody tests available too, which are a little bit more uh, easier to use than the IFA test detecting antibody against either the whole virus as antigen or particularly against a specific protein based on the, the diagnostic question of interest. The ecology of PED, what we see currently circulating in U.S. swine, would be two different strains. What has been termed the original strain would be that one that was detected back when uh, PED emerged in April or May of 2013. Retrospective testing at the ISUVDL again on retained fecal samples submitted at that time detected a positive accession on April 16th, and that was from the state of Ohio. The majority of virus that we do detect at this time in sequences of the original strain, but within the strain itself, there's very little genetic variability that we detect at this time. Nucleotide identity would range from 99 to 100%, and these sequences or the initial sequences were similar to a 2012 Chinese PED sequence that has been submitted to GenBank. The other strain circulating in U.S. swine would be termed the variant strain, or some diagnostic labs refer to as the Indel strain. ISU announced uh, detection of this virus in January of this year with a web announcement, with a more formal announcement from Ohio State University in February of this year. Again, retrospective testing on the same samples detected this virus on an accession on May 16th from the state of Iowa. Multiple states, up to at least 14 now, have had one positive accession with the variant strain. Sequence homology within the variant is still very uh, similar, 99.5 to 100% nucleotide identity. And again, this virus can be uh, uh, compared to other viruses in the public database and has been shown to be similar to another 2012 Chinese PED sequence that was submitted back at that time. Collectively, these data indicate that both PED strains have been present in U.S. swine since approximately April or May of last year. Comparing the variant to the original strain based on the spike protein sequence, which is, or the spike gene sequence, which is what's most commonly used in the variable region of the genome, demonstrates 93 to 94% nucleotide identity. And you can see if we do phylogenetic analysis and compare the genetic sequences of these viruses, they cluster separately with the original uh, sequences being located up here, variants being separated, forming their own cluster down here. The U.S. variants have similar genetic changes with uh, genetic deletions and insertions in their genome. However, the clinical significance still really remains unknown. We need a, P a PED variant isolate so we can do some experimental studies to understand the pathogenesis and potential cross-protection this virus could supply against the original strain. PED challenges that still face our swine industry are fairly extensive. This list isn't all-inclusive, but concerns that would still remain or challenges would be how we really prevent and control PED infection. Methods of control currently still remain somewhat inconsistent, and success of controlled exposure feedback of positive material is variable. Vaccination regarding that particular um, issue, few vaccines are currently available that we can use in swine and additional vaccines that are efficacious are needed. Regarding virus transmission, I think the challenge still remains on how PED continues to infect, or as we've recently um, understood from some herds, or a particular herd in Indiana, reinfect swine populations after they've gone negative for the virus, and this being in spite of uh, effective and extensive biosecu biosecurity measures that have been put into place on these farms. And still, diagnostic testing can be a challenge, more from some specific questions that are being asked in particular, how do we measure what can be considered a protective immune response so that we can protect our herds from uh, infection or exposure to the virus, and what's the duration of immunity that can be supplied by vaccines or natural infection? Future perspectives for, for PED, there remain several unknowns, and some of these questions perhaps won't be answered. But how did PED enter the U.S. still remains uh, a very high question on the list, one that, again, we probably may not be able to answer 
what are the pathogenic differences between original and variant PD uh, viruses circulating in swine and still what are the additional biosecurity needs and methods of control for PD that are going to be solidly effective. For the industry, we really need to improve our methods of prevention and control of the virus. We need additional efficacious vaccines, also additional serologic or diagnostic tests. It would be good if we could have cell culture isolates of these viruses because that's the way that we can effectively do experimental challenge studies, particularly against vaccinated swine to uh, evaluate protection in those cases. We also need to identify what would be considered correlates of immune protection so that we have a way to measure when we know that through testing an animal has been protected either post-infection or immunization, and just in general additional experimental studies are necessary. So what's next for PEDV? Definitely we need to expand the research that is currently ongoing as well as what can be conducted in the future. We need to expand our knowledge base. So collaborative efforts are necessary and have been ongoing to a fairly large degree and a great degree amongst multiple in, uh, entities within the industry, particularly the swine producers and their herd veterinarians, as well as the diagnostic labs and swine commodity groups, the animal health and feed industry, and government regulatory entities. Multiple PEDV resources are available, such as the AASV website, as well as university websites that outline their particular research efforts that are ongoing. These are available to everyone, and again, a good resource for PED information.